Antonio, I have to ask both of you. Um, one might think that data and creativity are worlds apart. What is your take on combining the two and creating something new and valuable for a destination? Corey, why don't you start? So um, I think data and creativity are yin and yang, right? They, they go together by nature because ultimately using data and creativity together is all about problem solving. Uh, Einstein said that if he was given 60 minutes to solve a problem, he'd spend 55 minutes defining what that problem is, meaning using a lot of creativity in how he looked at the data and the insights and the way he combined and recombined the data in order to define the right problem to solve. And then five minutes solving it, which is both, again, a data-driven and creativity, uh, there are creativity sides to it because the way that we're creative and the way that we're able to come up with ideas very quickly is through pattern recognition, right? Over time, we store all sorts of patterns away from experiences and books and novels and uh, interactions, and we're able to access those patterns in order to quickly come up with creative solutions. Now, that's one answer to data and creativity. Now, related to how can we, you know, I think one of the biggest challenges when it comes to tourism and how cities can tap into data in order to uh, improve tourism and also just improve uh, experiences for the inhabitants is getting the data in the first place, right? Because you can't necessarily track everything people are doing and it's very difficult to, uh, to obtain the data. So how can we be creative about getting data? And there was a lot of talk in the last panel about Disneyland, we don't want to become Disneyland, etc. And no, we don't want to become Disneyland, but we can actually learn from Disneyland. They do some smart things uh, in terms of managing their populations and their visitors, etc. And I think one of the most genius things that they developed in the last year is their, their magic bracelets, which the main benefit for visitors is cashless payments, right? I can easily pay for anything in the park or anything in hotels. I can start to have personalized service, personalized offers. I get points, discounts, etc. So maybe this is an, ex uh, an extreme example, but sometimes looking at these outliers is how we can come up with better solutions in cities. And there is a trend in general in the world for cashless payments, right? So how can cities really tap into that trend and work with local finan financial institutions and maybe develop some sort of tourist card or tourist bracelet even, where it's benefiting businesses, it's helping with discovery, you can connect it to uh, connected applications, and it's helping on one hand control where the tourists are going because you're helping to give them more data and um, go to the places you want them to go. So maybe keeping a bit of separation from some uh, of the sacred areas of the city that inhabitants want to keep sacred. Um, and at the same time, you're really benefiting businesses because they can access the data, they can promote, and you're, in, you're uh, developing loyalty and advocacy for your city. So um, that's how to be creative about getting the data is to, is to look at some of these examples. Okay, well, if you think that in Spain we, we welcome